Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today I'm going to be talking about how I made this Canon M50 camera and this was a commission piece for Procreate and it was actually quite a long time ago that I made this sketch now. It was for the 4.2 release. It was the first time that they had the quick shape feature and a bunch of new features like the clipping mask and stuff like that as well. Uh, and I thought that today I can break down how I did that. It's been it's probably about time since, I, uh, since I've done it to show you guys. So I wanted to try something a little bit different today and we can go through the time lapse as I am scrolling through it so we can talk about different things as well. So this is a long time since I've seen this sketch so some of the layers might surprise me as much as it surprised you. So let's just jump in and we'll learn how I did this sketch so long ago together. The first thing that I do want to point out is that because this was a commission piece, it's always really important to work smarter, not harder, when you're doing a commission piece. So I did this photo shoot and I actually set up this scene so that I could use it as reference material for the post itself. Now, if some of you are thinking that, you know, it's terrible that I'm using an underlay and it's terrible that I'm using something to trace over, then that's the whole point of working smart, working efficiently and getting everything done as fast as you can. I was commissioned to test out the quick shape feature and that's exactly what I did. I wasn't commissioned to sketch something from scratch and I wasn't commissioned to come up with uh, a, a, an image from scratch without any reference material. In the real world, outside of university and outside of learning about these things, then reference material is used way more than you might think. So with that out of the way, uh, I can turn this reference material off and go back to the sketch. And I think what we're going to do is come now into time-lapse replay and it's going to start uh, going through the time-lapse replay that Procreate has installed. And already I've gone in and I've sketched the outlines using the quick line and the quick shape feature, just snaps the ellipses to where they needed to be. I've got this blue outline already. And really this first part of the sketch is really quick because as soon as you put down some color, I'm just going to scrub through now, as soon as you put down some color, you can start to add in some highlights and shadows just using um, some darker and lighter values. So you can see here I've used a medium gray and the reason why I'm using a medium gray is because that gives me space in the color spectrum to then add some shadows in with some darker colors as well. So you can see me going in here and adding some darker colors and I keep bringing in the reference material at this very early stage to make sure I'm getting the lighting correct and at this point now that I've got the outline sketched it's all about painting by numbers so I can just go through apologies for the siren living in London it's really loud uh, so as soon as I've got the base color, I can start adding in some highlights and shadows and you can see I've done my leather finish, which I really enjoy using, which is just scribbling absolutely everywhere. And if you do it enough and then pull back the opacity, then you can really start to get a leather texture in there as well. And what I want to highlight here as well in the lens is it is so simple. If I bring it back up, it's so simple to shade in a lens with just four uh, different aspects of it. You can see at the very top, I've got a very faint amount of highlight, then some of the base color, followed by the main highlight, which is the biggest white area, followed by, ooh, followed by the main shadow, and then some bounce back light at the bottom. So you can see, uh, if you imagine this as a gradient, it's actually quite a simple gradient, but it gives such a, depth to the piece as well uh, and really makes it look cylindrical with those bounce back features it makes it look a little bit shiny as well like a satin finish and like it's in a studio which is really cool as well so i'm just going to let the animation play through a little bit now and we'll see what i was up to so i've started adding in the buttons now and again it's just everything's already in and i can start to add in the highlights and the shadows based on the base color that i already had on there this feature was really cool. I really liked having this texture from Procreate that I could use for this knurling feature on the buttons. Uh, it's a really nice texture in real life and I really wanted to capture that in the sketch as well. 
and you can see now uh, I think I might have just sketched these in the uh, lens cap and the uh, ND filter that I've got installed on it as well um, and then again it's just adding in those extra details I'm ringing about this knurling feature as well and you can see me really roughly so this is before I was even figuring out about the clipping mask and the layer mask features so I was just uh, sketching a huge area and then erasing it back but I have a video now on the clipping masks and layer masks in Procreate as well so you can check that out too so moving on, I'm now sketching in the uh, screw feature. And again, because, um, because I was still figuring out quick shape and stuff, I'm still doing it the old fashioned way, which is without quick shape and just going through and erasing the things that I don't need along with the lens detail in there as well. And then my classic, I love doing these pop highlights in here too really gives the piece a cartoonish finish I think at the very end and then the very last piece to start sketching in is the lens cap which is actually really intricate that I didn't realize until I started sketching it uh, but again it's just adding in the highlights adding in the shadows using the base color that we had and then a really soft brush the softest brush that I could possibly get for the shadow and then even later on I even uh, gave that a Gaussian blur as well just to really soften that off because you can still kind of see the brush strokes in there that I really didn't want and then adding in some more details now adding in the text and I think I do yeah I do bring the reference image back just to make sure the text is in the right sort of place and it's a rule of thumb because you can see here in this text I haven't aligned it perfectly because it looks better with the other uh, layout that I've got it on here so it's a rule of thumb, it's, it's not a science, it's an art, and uh, it really starts to come together when you've got the background in, you've got the highlights and the shadows, and adding in that gray background really gives the highlights something to pop off as well, and it makes the highlights in the piece brighter than the background itself. And so actually you end up with a really more vivid piece because of that as well. So there it is guys, I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of the Procreate 4.2 Canon M50 sketch. I know that it has been a really long time since I've gone through this piece, a really long time ago when I actually sketched it, so it was really fun to go through and find out all the different ways that I was doing it back then without knowing about the clipping mass and the layer mass like I said. So. If you learned anything in this video, don't forget to let me know down in the comments below because I love reading those and I need to know how to improve in the future as well. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Bye.